Rattlesnakes are some of the most feared animals in the country because of their deadly venom. And none is as frequently encountered as the prairie rattlesnake, found all the way from Canada down to Mexico. But a bite from this snake isn't like other rattlesnakes because of its special venom that's resistant to anti-venom. So just how deadly is this snake and what would happen if it bit you? To find out, we're gonna take a look at what compounds are in its venom and describe what each of them does to the human body. But first, I have to find one, so I've come to the Great Plains of New Mexico with a foolproof plan for finding one of these deadly reptiles. Tonight, we're road cruising. These roads are black, so they attract a lot of sunlight during the day. And that means even at night, they're still gonna be warm. So snakes are gonna be cruising onto this, hopefully not getting hit by cars. And that includes our very special target species. So we're gonna wait for sunset, cruise along these roads, and hopefully find this awesome snake. Large grassland habitats like this are the ideal habitat for the snake, but are also prime real estate for farmers wanting to grow crops. And with our two species competing for the same resource, Sources, it's common for us to come into contact. This snake is responsible for some of the most bites in the entire country. So it's important to understand the effects of its venom. And as the sun sets on the Great Plains, I finally found my opportunity to explain exactly what this viper can do. All right, guys, that is what we're looking for. This is the prairie rattlesnake. This is the most wide ranging rattlesnake in all of North America. They live all the way up in Canada and all the way down in Mexico and everywhere in between. This is a specialist of the Great Plains. This nice brushy habitat is absolutely perfect for the snake to find its preferred prey. Now this snake is often confused with a Western Diamondback, but there are a few ways to tell that this is in fact a prairie rattlesnake, Crotalus viridis. If you look at its tail, it does not have the white stripes like the Western Diamondback does. It does have some stripes going across, but it's not straight black and white like a raccoon's tail. Another way to tell the difference is the size. These guys will never get as big as a Western Diamondback, but they are definitely still a snake that can pack a punch. Now the venom of the prairie rattlesnake is bizarre. It's actually proportionally deadlier than most of the country's other rattlesnakes. But because it injects such a small amount of venom, it isn't as lethal. However, it's the uniqueness of its venom that makes it so dangerous. You may have heard of the three major venom types. Neurotoxic, which attacks your nervous system, leading to deadly paralysis. Hemotoxic, which attacks your blood, rupturing blood vessels and causing massive internal bleeding. And finally, cytotoxic venom, which attacks your body's cells. However, this last category is pretty much the junk bin of the three, and many different types of toxin are placed here. And the one that the prairie rattlesnakes have in spades is myotoxin, which attacks your muscles. And it's this rare compound that makes it so hard for antivenom to treat its bites. But what does this unique venom exactly do to you? To find that out, we're gonna look at what chemicals are in it and see what each of them do. Prairie rattlesnakes don't always have this myotoxic venom. As juveniles, the main component of their venom is something called P3SVMP, a compound which hemorrhages blood, making tissues go necrotic and immobilizing prey. So if a baby prairie rattler bites you, the wound is gonna look a lot uglier, but because the venom is such a small dose, it doesn't do as much damage as an adult when it trades in this toxin for others, like myotoxins. These make the muscles in your body rapidly contract and quickly immobilizes you. This means if it gets to your diaphragm, the muscle that enables you to breathe, it can be lethal. The next most prolific chemical in adult venom are hemostasis-disrupting serine proteases, which act as an anticoagulant and keeps your wound bleeding. The last big player is another nasty toxin, ohanin-like proteins, which massively increase your sensitivity to pain, making any minor inconvenience feel like excruciating hell. In other words, getting bit by one of these is really gonna suck. But the problems don't end when you get to the hospital because of how antivenom works. The antivenom we use in America is called Crofab and is made from the venom of these four snakes to cover most of the types of viper venom you'll find in the US. This is so if a person doesn't know what snake they're bitten by, this mixture should cover it and is a lot more efficient to make rather than specific treatments for each species. However, the unique myotoxins in prairie rattler venom aren't neutralized well by Crofab since it's a completely different type of venom than the other snakes in the US. 
U.S. Which means even though the antivenom will neutralize the other toxins in the venom, most of the myotoxin remains. Luckily, there's a way around this issue, by giving you an insane amount of antivenom. Because of the overkill dosages doctors give snake bite patients, the small amount of myotoxin that antivenom neutralizes stacks up and it saves you. Although it's not all good news, given that just one vial costs over $3,000 and four to six of these are needed to properly treat you, the medical bill is gonna be more painful than the snake bite itself. Even though it's pricey, Crofab actually treats prairie rattler venom better than our previous antivenom. So in recent time, prairie rattlesnake bites are rarely ever fatal. In fact, over a four year period in Colorado and out of 175 bites, no one died. What an awesome opportunity to spend some time with this snake. This is definitely something I wanted to see when traveling the grasslands of New Mexico. If you guys want to see more content where I work with venomous animals, be sure to subscribe. I'm traveling all across the country and featuring some of the country's most deadly creatures. So if you want to see some of that, be sure to follow along and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for watching.